today on Outside the Box Reviews, going back to what I said I'd do over six months ago and having the yearly part two of my State of the Collection video. Basically taking a look at what's in my collection right now. This is a video I have put off over and over. I wanted to do it six months after, so that would have been early July, because the last one was early February. Another great time to do a video like that because there tends to be a lull that time of year with collecting and things coming out because it's right before SDCC. But I just didn't have the time this year and now about a month after I wanted to do it, I'm finally getting around to it. So let's just jump right in. I'll show you what's on my shelves. You can see I have recently revamped everything. A whole new bank of shelves up on my wall, replacing the old ones, a new Detolf shelf. If you followed along on Facebook, I actually posted as I built the second bank of shelves over here and I'm pretty excited with how things are starting to look. So our top shelf up here is kind of my random, mostly horror shelf. So I got my Killer Clown, got my Iron Maiden Eddie figures back in the back. Machete, can't wait for Machete Kills this year. A Bubba Hotep, I love that movie. My custom Cropsy from The Burning. You can see back in there I have a custom Eddie from different worlds, from the Iron Maiden A Matter of Life and Death album, and my custom Beach Bum Zombie. Then my two custom Leslie Vernon figures back there. And then the real DeConte Collectibles one. And then my whole little Evil Dead Army of Darkness display. So we have Evil Ash up there in the front, Feralwold Arms Ash, Henrietta popping way out there with the extended neck, and Hero Ash. Back in the back row, we have the McFarlane Army of Darkness Ash, the NECA Army of Darkness Ash, and the Evil Ash from Army of Darkness from McFarlane. This is like an ash load of ash. Up here, I got a bunch of Necronomicons, all three of them. The head, the deer head, I need to figure out a better way to position that. Tape deck and the little minion ash. Coming across the way over here, I have my Terminator stuff. So I have five T-1000s. The San Diego Comic-Con in the middle that actually showed up at Toys R Us. All different ones. This guy over here on the end, the two, the Galleria and the Pescadero. I actually switched out the torso on, so they are backwards, in case anybody was wondering. And all my Terminator 2 T-800s. I have the Pescadero, the Man of Machine, the Cyberdyne Showdown, and the Final Battle. I really need to review more of these guys. Then going to T-1, I got Kyle Reese, Technor with the Battle Damage Technor in the back there, the Police Station Showdown, the Tanker Truck Pursuit. Way back there, I have the two Endoskeletons, one from Terminator 2, one from Terminator Original. And then the T1 Playmates crappy figure. I also have the McFarlane TX back there. And my Battle Damage and Non-Battle Damage Robocop. And my John Rambo, joined by Gizmo up there on the shelf. Now here is the long one. I got my Predator shelves. I have the Predator's Predators over here. So I got Tracker with his dog, Falconer, Berserker masked and unmasked. I have the two semi-cloaked back there. The Cloaked Berserker. Also back here I got my AVP stuff. So I have the AVP Celtic along with the two Wolf Predators. Can't wait to update that section of my collection. Hey, it rhymed. Then I have the Predator's Classic Predator here. Then my little Growing Dead End set up. Yeah, I did pick up the Comic-Con one. I'll probably throw them randomly into the next Predator week. So I got Big Red and Albino. And a little Arkham City Batman back there. I actually have some pieces. I was thinking about making a custom Dead End Batman. My urge to do custom figures lately has been pretty low. So we'll see if I ever get around to that. Coming over here, I think I got these guys a little too bunched up. I may need to switch some stuff out. But here's my P1 section. So we have the Gore which was the prototype, the masked P1, all the different versions back there, the cloaked, the semi-water emergence cloaked, the open mouth, closed mouth, of course we're getting yet another one this Christmas, and then all four of the Dutch figures, still some of my favorite figures I've picked up recently. Then I got the trophy wall with my three city hunters and my elder parked in front of it. We are going to be getting a new elder. That gets me really excited. He's my favorite of the Predators. I'd love to see what the update comes out to be. Then, of course, the rest of my Lost Tribe. Once again, a little packed over here. It looks a lot better until I got the trophy wall, to be honest with you. It all spaced out a little better, and that thing just takes up a ton of real estate, both in width and in depth. It just really took a lot of shelf space from me, so I can't really use it any other way. But there's the rest of the Lost Tribe. Moving down to my work in progress on my Kaiju Diorama, I have 
my space Godzilla, along with King Ghidorah, the space monsters attacking the Earth monsters over here. So Mecha Godzilla, Godzilla, and Rodan all teaming up, taking on the space baddies. Kind of funny because I wasn't really thinking about it when I set this all up, but I believe that's actually the current arc going on in the Godzilla comics, is bringing in the space monsters and having the humans and the Earth kaiju kind of team up against them. You see I have some buildings in here. These need to be refined and made a little better. Also working on some backdrop ideas. Obviously this is not big enough yet. Then of course Pacific Rim going on over here, trying to integrate them into the whole display. So these guys duking it out in the middle of my kaiju battle as well. Coming across again, we've got my universal horror figures. These things from Diamond Select may not be the best figures, but to me they kind of represent the beginning of all of this. This is the movies that got me into horror movies and ones I still go back to a lot. So we got Frankenstein's monster on the table, the bride back there, the invisible man, Phantom of the Opera, the mummy, the Wolfman, both the original and the remake, Dracula, and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Back down here we have another shelf of horror. I am very happy now to be able to have multiple horror shelves. So we got my Hellraiser set over here. So Pinhead, Chatterbeast, the two Chatters, and the Skinless Julia. Having a nice transition out of that would be to keep with the Clive Barker, have Candyman in there, and then just have another black clad figure, so the Ghost Face. We'll take a trip over to Texas. We got Leatherface. I got two from the original and one from the remake. Leatherface is a character I don't feel gets enough love. I really need to pick up that part two Leatherface in the Chop Top or Mezco, but they go for a little more than I want to spend on them right now. But really do need to expand my Texas Chainsaw. Hell, I lived in Dallas for long enough. I need to have a good Texas Chainsaw collection. And then over here we have the Halloween setup. So we have the Evolution of Evil 2 pack with the Tombstone and the Little Pumpkin and the two Rob Zombie versions, the NECA original remake and the sequel to the remake done by Mezco. And keeping with the Halloween spirit, we got Sam from Trick or Treat, my, one of my all-time favorite Halloween movies. Coming across here, we have the video game shelf. So we have the Assassin's Creed set up with Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2. We have Brotherhood there in the back and Revelations up front. The new figures are actually over on my desk as I'm working on those reviews right now. We got the gauntlet back there in the background. Coming over, I have Kratos from God of War 2. Back there, I got my old StarCraft figures. I picked these up probably about 6th or 7th grade. Must have been 6th grade, because I think I was still in Tampa when I grabbed them. That was when I left, so I got my Terran Marine, my Zerg Hydralisk, which is way undersized, and my falling apart Protoss Zealot. Then I got some Legacy of Kane figures. I got these from my girlfriend's brother back when he gave me that really awesome McFarlane Queen Alien. These were some other figures that were in that little giveaway, I guess. Legacy of Kane is not really a game that I've gotten into as much. I played the original. I haven't really been able to get into the second one, and I just have these figures on display because I have them. And over here we have Shell, Shell, I forget which one's the correct pronunciation. It's got two little of the blind box portal turrets down there with the box behind it, because I thought, as much as I'm outside the box reviews, the package actually works itself into the diorama because it's packaged like it would be a turret you could take home and buy, like a washing machine or another appliance. So, kind of works out. I really have been wanting to shoot the review on her. I'm planning something a little special with it, so it's taken some time to get everything together. I actually kind of have to script out what I want to do. So, soon enough you'll get her. Not sure if I'm going to get the Atlas and Peabody to go along with it. Coming down here, I got my Ninja Turtle display. Once again, kept the packaging for these classics figures just because it's nostalgic to me. It looks so much like the original packaging. I just love it. I got my new TV turtles, Leo and Donatello over there. The four classics in the middle. The other two TV ones back on this side. And of course, across the bottom, the vintage or vintage style original turtles. Gotta have those. Massive nostalgia there for me. And then I have my other Godzilla stuff. This is my Bandai soft vinyl shelf. So I have all my different Godzillas across the front. Destroya, King Ghidorah, Hidora, Mothra. Man, there's a lot of ahs at the end of these sentences. Rodan, the two different versions of Gigan, Mecha Godzilla from the 70s, King Caesar, which the new version should be out soon. I've actually seen it in some stores, but just been waiting to spend money on it. The really bad looking Space Godzilla, now that I have the Monster Arts version. And of course, Anguirus, my favorite character. And little tiny Trendmasters mini playset, kind of like a Polly Pocket or a Mighty Max playset, but Godzilla themed. Here in the bottom, I just have some random books. 
a lot of making of King Kong, other movie kind of things, movie novelizations. I have the Book of Sith in here from Star Wars. This book, I posted this on Facebook. I love this book. This is like my childhood in book form. The Crestwood House Monsters books. If anybody happens to find any of those somewhere, besides King Kong, because it's the only one I have, shoot me a line. I'd love to pick some up at a reasonable price. Couple little scrapbooks over here. This one is all concert tickets. So just pages and pages of ticket stubs. And of course I just flipped through all of them. But a lot of the metal shows I've been to and stuff. I guess not too many pages, but enough. So many digital tickets now. I always miss out on getting the stubs. And this one, this one was a big one for me. This is my robot combat scrapbook. I did battle bots for four years when I was in high school and it was a major, major cool thing for me back then. So this is something I'm really proud of to have all this collected and assimilated together. That was my team's robot in our third year competition. It was a big vertical spinner, 120 pound machine. Like I said, just something that used to be really big to me and I'm very happy to have my little scrapbook of it in my collection now. Over here with the Mezco Mezit Tumbler, kind of a weird impulse buy I got. I might sell it eventually. I really don't like it too much. Now my Avengers movie trading cards. This is actually a little swatch of Robert Downey Jr.'s costume, which is kind of cool. Coming across the bottom here, I have my old Train Masters Godzilla. So there's the Supercharged Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla 2, Mothra, the 98 Godzilla, and two of the eggs. Over here, I have the Hasbro Sentinel and the Blackbird Jet from Toy Biz from the 90s. Up here on my stool, I have a plush face hugger my girlfriend got me for Christmas. Reaching way up here, you can see my alien shelf. I have aliens from all four original movies and the queen back there. The queen's kind of rearing up to make extra shelf room. I got the newer NECA stuff, the new Xenomorph Warrior, and the two Marines along with the McFarlane Hicks back there. I have my Prometheus stuff, the Deacon, the David, and the three different engineers and the Trilobite. I got my Freddy Krueger display. You can see the NECA part one, part two replica glove in the background there. Freddy has the skull from the Predator set. I told you I had an extra one. I definitely wanted to throw it his way. He looks pretty badass with that in his hand. Mezco Freddy back there. Part two from NECA, part three is from NECA. Of course, I have the furnace back there in the background replicated what they did in the Comic-Con display. I put the Jason mask on there and I put my little Elm Street sign from the Mezco stylized Freddy on it. Some more part three from Mezco, part four from both companies. There is the stylized Freddy. Dream Child Freddy, both movies. The Roach Debbie piece of crap that I got for $2. New Nightmare Freddy, the remake glove and the two remake figures. Love that remake glove, one of my favorite pieces. I wish the newer part one glove was nearly as cool as this. And coming down to my Jason shelf. So we're gonna start with everything but part one. So I got part two, three different part threes, three different part fours, my part five back there, part six, part seven. Missing my part eight, still haven't finished that custom. Told you I wasn't really feeling it right now, but I do have the toxic waste barrel for him back there. Jason goes to hell, Jason X. Freddy vs. Jason and my two remake ones. Of course, all kinds of great accessories. I got Mother's Head, I got the Severed Arm, Pamela Voorhees' Tombstone. Yeah, I just called her Mother. This isn't Psycho. It basically is. It's Psycho where the roles reverse. Come on. Another Severed Arm, Severed Head, Jason Voorhees, Tombstone. Little demon creature with the dagger in his mouth. And little heart down there, the bloody heart of Jason. I have the Mezco stylized 12 inch figure there in the back. Then my signed stuff. I have my Kane Hodder signed part seven Jason picture and my Derek Mears signed remake Jason. Come over here, I have my Universal Horror Mini Mates. So I've got these in chronological order. So Hunchback, Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, The Mummy, The Wolfman, and The Creature from Black Lagoon. These are all the black and white Toys R Us exclusive ones. We come down here, we got the color ones. These are accented with little mini Mondo posters. The Mummy and the Sarcophagus on top. Dr. Frankenstein, The Monster. Bride and Angry Villager. Van Helsing and Dracula. Dr. Reed and The Creature. Captain Phoebus and Hunchback, and the Wolfman Larry Talbot. Back here, I have my zombie survival kit that my girlfriend's dad made me for my birthday. It's freaking awesome. It has in case of zombies break glass, there's a gun in there, a hatchet, some kind of zombie virus syringe, some ammo. Got the zombie survival guide, zombie hunting permit, some zombie antidote pills, and a little first aid kit. 
Also has a hammer on the side of it to break the glass. This is a really, really beefy thing, and there's some little critter sitting on top of that. I'm not sure what he's doing. The rest of my autograph pieces, I got my Danny Trejo signed piece. I have a blank Freddy Krueger, but there's a reason for that. My Bill Mosley signed Texas Chainsaw. My Doug Bradley pinhead photo. The two programs and menus from the horror conventions I've been to, and then my Tony Todd signature, my Daniel Harris signature. Or on this wall, I got my French creep show picture, my Japanese Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah picture, my American Texas Chainsaw poster, and my Italian Night of the Living Dead poster. Some more little critters over here. I got another gremlin hanging from the wall, and. This one coming out of the power socket, that's a little nerve wracking. Oh look, yet another one clinging to the grate. It's a total infestation in here. Also above my door, I have my 90s, I believe this was a Kenner Ghostbuster trap. My parents recently moved and they dug this out and gave it to me and another crazy nostalgia piece. I love my Ghostbusters trap and this one still works. It still freaking works after all these years. Of course, got my big Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster wall scroll. I love it. This is my custom papercraft Casey Jones mask. Coming up across the top here, I got some vinyl stuff. I have my two Godzilla Tokyo vinyl figures of Godzilla and Mechagodzilla. I hope that second series ever does make it to stores. I have my baby face from the Hills Run Red custom Mighty Mug. And of course my Funko Pop vinyl. I got Freddy, Michael Myers, Jason Leatherface. And in the back there I have the Alien, Hannibal Lecter, and Predator. Of course Hannibal has to sit between Alien and Predator because if I didn't, they would fight and it would just be a mess and that would suck. Up here I've got my taxidermy werewolf head Halloween prop that has worked its way into my office. Ridiculous quantity of DVDs. This is only part of my DVD collection, but a lot of horror movies, all the Godzilla movies, a bunch of Marvel and DC stuff, Alien Predators, of course. The whole bottom is music videos and TV shows and stuff. A lot of great heavy metal DVDs in there. And okay, the part I keep shooting around because I'm really excited to show it off. My Detolf cabinet, I just got this last week. On top here, I've got a couple things sitting. In the back is the Kamari statue from Kotobukiya from Final Fantasy X. Not actually mine, it's my girlfriend's, and I believe she actually wants to sell it. So anybody interested, obviously you're going to take a reasonable price for it. Nothing too lowball, but yeah, so that's going to go away. And then I have my Creature from the Black Lagoon bust bank, which I thought this was a cool place for it for the time being. I actually have plans to make something for the top of this. It's kind of a capper for this. I'm not sure if I'll get around to it, but I have ideas. Then pardon the really crappy light, I do need to get a better lighting system from inside this. But right now on the top shelf I have my girlfriend's baby doll hot toy and the Red Skull hot toy that I won. Down here I have my Universal Horror figures. I have the Mezco stylized Frankenstein's Monster and the Mezco stylized Creature from the Black Lagoon. These guys are gonna go away once I actually get my Hot Toy Terminator T-800. He's gonna end up taking the top shelf. These two are gonna be moved down and these guys are gonna be out of here like I said. Then I have my Sideshow and Custom Shelf. So back there I have the Part 9, Jason Goes to Hell, Jason Voorhees sideshow figure. I have the Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger sideshow figure with his real base. The base for Jason Goes to Hell is on my custom Michael Myers. I have my custom Part 4 Jason Voorhees back there who still needs a stand. And my custom Freddy vs. Jason Freddy that still needs a new head on the signed Robert England stand. And down here right now, because I thought it looked really cool, I got my two Jason masks, my fiberglass masks replica, and the NECA really tiny replica next to the lament configuration from Hellraiser. Let me pop this open and we'll give these figures a little more justice. Baby doll just looks so amazing. Say what you want about the movie, the figure is beautiful. And of course Red Skull is pure badass. I still need to track down another true type body for him and a couple other parts and I'll make the Johann Schmidt version. And these guys down here, I need to do a review on this Freddy, he's interesting. And the other guys here in the back. And over here I've got my desk. I was actually watching some of Darth Magnus's figure reviews. I'm looking at some of his old Ones Customs figures. If you haven't checked out either of those guys, totally recommend it. Magnus has an incredible collection of customs and one makes some really disturbing customs. And of course my reviewing spot, in case you haven't seen it before, 
You have my black cloth background that all seems to attract dust and dog hair that I can never quite get off of it. And then my two lights, these are daylight bulbs that I use as recommended by a few different people. I think it gives a good effect. I have the paper on there to kind of dampen the light a little bit so it's not so extreme. So that is the state of the collection as of August 2013. As you can see, it still is crazy in here. I've got a lot of shelves packed full of stuff. I got room for two more shelves up on top of these towers and those figures can be organized a little better, let's face it. So there's still plenty of room to expand and grow and change things up. But as of right now, I'm really happy with where this is. At the beginning of this year, I said my collecting resolution was to collect less junk and concentrate on quality over quantity. While I don't think my buying has slowed down much, especially because I've been able to afford it this year more than I kind of have in the past. I definitely feel like I've taken the collection in a better place. I feel like it looks better than it ever has and just really, really happy with it right now. So that's it for this State of the Collection update. I'll probably do another one back in February of 2014. And now I have to get back to doing some reviews.